Hey everyone, welcome back. We have so much to talk about today. This might be the most jam-packed episode we've ever done of Prime News, where we deliver you a bunch of news stories, all the latest and greatest, because you know what? I took the weekend off, and in taking the weekend off, news got absolutely insane. Today we have brand new details, potential details anyways, for Nintendo Switch 2. We also have updates on the games that are going to appear in the rumored Nintendo Direct this week, including when this rumored Direct is going to be happening and when it's going to be announced. We have updates on that as well. Oh guys, by the way, live action Zelda movie, can I interest any of you in that? Yeah, some rumors around that are flying around, and we also have an interesting update to Mario Kart Tour that could be an indication on the future of the Mario Kart franchise, or maybe not. I guess we'll discuss that when the time is right. That being said, we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate it if you would smash that validation button, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and you know what? Ring-a-ling that ding-a-ling so you can be notified of all future uploads. <laughs> So our first story today, we're going to bring you the latest and greatest on Nintendo Switch 2 because oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, am I ever excited about this stuff. We have some details coming from both Nate the Hate and Digital Foundry. Nate the Hate providing a majority of the extra details in addition to the reports we had last week. So you know what? Let's just dive right in. So the first story here deals with a Breath of the Wild demo. So Nate the Hate put out a podcast to clarify where this stuff came from. He put out a new episode of his Nate the Hate podcast today with Modern Vintage Gamer, and he, throughout the podcast, he's basically added additional details to what was said last week. So the Breath of the Wild demo was running at 4K and 60 FPS. Now, I treated this last week when I brought it up that it was running at 4K 60 FPS, even though the articles never said it was. All that happened was I got validated today by Nate the Hate saying that it ran at 4K 60 FPS, and that's what he heard. But yeah, I, I heard the same thing. I just sort of threw it in there because I figured it was quite obvious that's what Breath of the Wild demo on Switch 2 was running at. But I guess now you have somebody else independent of me saying as well such. Anyways, but that wasn't really the emphasis or point of the Breath of the Wild demo. It was to show off that the game now instantly loads from home screen to game launch. So I remember like... A lot of Switch games take 30 seconds or so to launch. That's not the case here. It's instant, which is a big deal because that's almost what it's like, almost what it's like on PlayStation 5 on Xbox Series. So it is showing off that Nintendo has advanced internal memory, maybe even advanced, well, game cards that are going to allow for more instant loading of games. Now, a reminder that demos like this aren't really about backwards compatibility. This is something that Nate the Hate brought up, and bringing this game to a new platform, etc, etc, etc. It's to show off the load times, suggesting a much faster internal storage. Now, he does say that all he heard is that it's using DLSS 3.5. Now, this is what the Video Game Chronicles article originally said before it was edited and removed, and it is different than the 3.1 that Necrofilipe said that he had heard. Now, he's saying that it probably wasn't using all of the modern features, notably frame generation wasn't really mentioned by anyone, so it's possible that, you know, that's not part of it. And again, frame generation can only run on the latest GPUs, the Lovelace line, or the 4000 series. However, anything else in 3.5 can technically run on the new Switch. Now, the Matrix Awakens demo did showcase ray tracing. This is a, a point of contention where people, oh yeah, ray tracing on this new system? No way. But it, it didn't just showcase ray tracing. It said, or at least his sources told him, that the ray tracing was as good as, if not significantly better, than what was shown on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Now, what was pointed out is that this demo is really about the Unreal Engine 5 availability day one on the system, and it plays extremely well with NVIDIA's DLSS, because yes, that's what the Matrix demo was running through. Now, a lot of talk around Gamescom was that this system could be releasing, or some sort of date of March 20th, 2024. Now, he doesn't have full clarity on if this was when the system would be announced or when the system would be released. They went through the scenario of it possibly being released then, but, you know, there's no indication one way or another, so we need to really pay attention to March 2024, which, by the way, that's only three months into next year. Sounds like we're going to hear about this system, at least in Q1, maybe released in Q1. That would just be absolutely insane. Uh, he did say that he didn't also hear anything about backwards compatibility that really wasn't talked about at Gamescom. Now, details from Digital Foundry, who did a podcast as well today, said, Indeed, the T239 chip appears to be what is in the Switch 2, based on everything that they have heard. T239 chip is, you know, otherwise known as Drake, it has all these other names. Either way, it's running on the 3000 series GPU architecture, which, yes, 
can run DLSS 3.5. So that all sort of lines up. Now they did mention the ray tracing advantages seen behind the scenes in the Matrix demo is entirely due to the fact that NVIDIA's technology for ray tracing is just that far advanced compared to AMD. So while AMD might have more powerful hardware in the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, their, cap their ray tracing capabilities aren't actually that great, especially compared to the modern ray tracing abilities of NVIDIA. So essentially, yeah, ray tracing could actually be better on Nintendo Switch 2, especially for games using DLSS, because not only does DLSS have some modes in it that could end up making ray tracing run smoother, in addition to that, the ray tracing technology is just better. So kind of weird, right? Like that was the big thing pushed with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, but this little engine that could, that's technically less powerful, might be better at this one particular feature. Kind of interesting, right? Uh, they also said that you, Unreal Engine Fine has gotten lighter over the years and much more scalable and more compatible with modern features like DLSS. And they wanted to make sure that Unreal Engine 5 games would run beautifully on Switch 2 because of the possibility of how large the audience for that platform could be. Basically, they don't want to miss the boat on this like so many developers did on the first Switch, and they're seeing a lot of potential here, especially if they're hitting that $399 price point with this sort of system. I do think that this is going to bode very, very well for Nintendo Switch 2. So you guys let me know about all these details and what your thoughts are on it down in the comments below because my lord, we have an even bigger story to get to. And no, that story is not this one. However, this one is still fascinating because it appears that Mario Kart Tour, it doesn't really appear, Nintendo just straight up announced that Mario Kart Tour is done getting support on October 4th. When I say support, it means new updates. They're not going to release any new content, any new characters, carts, uh, you know, parts for your carts, tracks, etc. It just comes to an end on October 4th. Now, this could indicate a rough release date for the last, you know, the, 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 the sixth edition of DLC for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, so we could take some, some away from that. We can also take away that maybe Nintendo's still slowly ending support for more of their mobile games. Now, Mario Kart Tour is actually still a pretty successful game for them, so it's weird to see support just... And although a lot of Mario Kart Tour players say they sort of saw this coming while they were still getting new tracks, they really slowed down on characters, they slowed down on adding new car parts. So I don't know if this means we're going to get a new Mario Kart mobile game someday or if this is an indication everyone's working on the next Mario Kart game, or maybe if Mario Kart Tour will be revisited once the new Mario Kart game comes out at some point. There's a lot of speculation that we could throw out around Mario Kart, but hey, we have a date for when Mario Kart Tour content is done being added, and while they're still going to have racing events, they're just repeat events. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Does this indicate they're ending Mario Kart Tour? Are they going to bring a new Mario Kart game out on, on phones? Are they going to bring a new Mario Kart game out in the next system? Man, I mean, there's really an infinite number of directions we can go with this particular story. Now, this next story could... Uh, for some of us, anyways, it's going to be bigger than the first stories. Nintendo Switch 2 is huge. It's all rumors. It's all whatever. But we have some more rumors here, and this is on a Zelda movie. <laughs> oh, yes, a live-action one at that. What the heck are we talking about? So over the weekend, My Time to Shine, a leaker who's pretty well-known and has a decent track record for leaking movies and show details for a lot of stuff, including Marvel movies, is claiming that Universal is working on a live-action Zelda movie. Now, we previously had rumors that they were working on a Zelda movie, and we figured, given the studio, Universal, that it would be animated. This is the first time we have heard that isn't the case, and instead, it's live action. Again, I don't know a whole lot about this particular leaker since I'd never really followed them, and their history is so long in a field of leaks, movies, and TV shows that I don't really have enough time or attention to pay to them to go through everything they've ever leaked. I just go off people that follow them and say sometimes they're wrong and sometimes they're right, and they've been right on some pretty big things. That being said, they have a massive following and have gotten enough correct from people I've talked to that we can't just dismiss this rumor. Now, maybe you want to dismiss it on the grounds that a live-action Zelda movie Sounds absolutely insane, and you know what? I wouldn't blame you, but hey, look, this is a pretty cool thing, and this is exactly what I wanted them to do with Zelda. I'd rather go live action than animated. Animated is probably safer, though, but I don't know, man. The big thing to me is Universal. Universal is an animation studio, but they're going to head up a live action movie? That's 
Look, I'm going to sit back and just let Universal do whatever they think they need to do. So next up, we have an update on Nintendo Direct goodness this week. Yes, folks, according to all the leaks and rumors and everything going out there, a Nintendo Direct is still happening this week. In fact, looking like the 13th. Now, again, we're going to go into this stuff. One little update from Necro Felipe. The rest comes from Pioro. If you don't know who these people are, we'll describe them in a moment. First, let's jump right into the Direct date. So, according to Necro Felipe, who is... A journalist for Universo Nintendo, the Nintendo Direct will be announced tomorrow, meaning it's going to be happening on the 13th, which is exactly what Pioro said on Twitter, or at least liked a tweet on Twitter saying the 13th, weeks ago. Now, who is Pioro? Pioro is just a person who has a pretty much perfect track record with Nintendo leaks on Twitter. Now, again... Take this all with a grain of salt. These are just rumors. I have no confirmation of directs or anything coming directly from me. But hey, this is stuff that has proven to be very believable in the past. Uh, Necro Felipe has gotten a lot of Nintendo Direct dates correct in the past. And yeah, Pioro obviously has the track record that they have. Now, if you remember last week, we talked about Pioro talking about an F-Zero game and a Donkey Kong game. And we went on to assume that, oh, maybe this is that rumored Donkey Kong game from years ago. And maybe this is that F-Zero GX remaster that was supposedly coming. Well, it turns out... Neither. Uh, this is, well, Pioro may be trolling people because in response, some other quote-unquote Twitter leakers started putting information out there on these Donkey Kong and F-Zero games. And I think Pioro did this on purpose because Pioro went ahead and called them out and then clarified exactly what his rumors were. Since he was only teasing franchises, he wasn't teasing what the games are. So what games are we talking about? Well... A new Donkey Kong game is actually going to be Donkey Kong vs. Mario. So, there you go. Like, that, that series is a series. It does involve Donkey Kong. What a clever way to call out fake leakers like New Marco Maro and others that started saying all these details we were going to get on the new DK game, and then that's not the DK game we're getting. So, quite interesting. He did note that the Princess Peach game is going to have its title shown, and he mentions Princess Peach Showtime, so maybe that is the exact title. I guess we'll find out pretty soon here. Uh, next up, the F-Zero appears to be an F-Zero 99 game because he mentioned that Pac-Man 99 was going to be leaving in October, and then he started liking people who were saying, oh, is it going to be F-Zero 99? He liked a bunch of F-Zero 99 tweets. So it sounds like it's going to be an F-Zero 99 game to replace the Pac-Man 99 game that's leaving NSO in October. Now, he did mention a Wii and DS game that is uh, that are related and hinted and he liked a tweet where someone responded saying another code in trace memory just throwing a shot in the dark he liked that tweet making it uh, pretty likely based on his history of liking tweets so when people get things right that another code in trace memory seemed to be the answer there now what does this mean if all this is true well that either this is a pretty weak direct let's say if the dk versus mario is one of the big reveals or the final reveal or he simply hasn't teased any of the big stuff he did indicate that none of what he said is the big closing game and he went on to ask people what they think the big closer will be but at this time he hasn't liked anyone's responses so maybe no one's gotten it correct or maybe pioro has gone dark after all after he made that tweet asking people what they thought the big closing game of the Direct will be, he hasn't had any activity on Twitter since. He hasn't liked anything, he hasn't reposted anything, he hasn't tweeted anything new. He's just gone dark. Now this has left some people to presume maybe this is a hint, because what other thing went dark after being announced? Metroid Prime 4, right? 2017, went dark. Announced the delay, been dark ever since. So some people are trying to connect to the Metroid Prime 4, probably a bit of a stretch. Uh, probably more hopium and copium. Other people, of course, are just being like, man, the Nintendo ninjas get him. He's been so right on stuff in the past. Maybe Nintendo's like, oh man, we got we got to take him out. But then his Twitter account isn't deleted or banned. So at this point, I think it's safe to say he's just purposely going silent. Uh, he got a lot of attention over the weekend, and now he's just like, hey, you know what? Let's chill and save all the big surprises for when the direct happens. Of course, we say that, then the Nintendo direct gets announced tomorrow, and then maybe he starts just telling us everything that's in the damn thing. I don't know, guys. I don't control what this person does. I'm just here to bring all of you guys the news. Remember, keep your healthy skepticism for a lot of the stories we talked about today, even that Mario Kart stuff. It's not that it's not stopping. It's just that we don't have any control over what any of it means. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. What an exciting way to start off our second full week of September. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I'm going to catch each and every one of you guys in that next video.